right there, we're going in now, we're going to meet the man himself, Tommy Heaney. We're going to sit down, we're going to talk football, we're going to talk Heaney's, everything. So we're here today at Heaney's with the one, the only Tommy Heaney. I was working in Lalston, a place called The Great House, and I uh, had a restaurant there called Restaurant Tommy Heaney. And then we, we started looking at getting a site for ourselves kind of thing, mm. you know, just you know, first kind of solo adventure, so yeah. to say. Um, and then, yeah, we just, we put a tweet up saying, we're trying to get a vibe of where people recommend it, we kind of open. We kind of say Cardiff, Swansea, Bristol, mm. you know, where do you, what do you think? And um, yeah, we had loads of messages from from everywhere, really. And then a message from John Cook, who used to own this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he messaged me on Twitter, saying, would you be uh, interested in this? Um, so yeah, we um, obviously we, what we were originally looking at was like this little 20, 25 seat restaurant with you know Nicky running in front of the house, me in the kitchen, that kind of thing, and now we're doing this. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> completely different yeah. to what we kind of mm. set out to do. But no, it's um, yeah, it's been amazing for Cardiff. If you've got the location here, like, yeah, I mean, great yeah, yeah, I mean, Pond County. Yeah, I mean, Pond County. Honestly, we, you know, I, I feel like I say it every day, but we've been blown away by. Mm. by how welcome we've been made and the support we've had from, from everyone but Poncana in particular for me it's kind of it's got that whole embodies what you're what yeah, you're about and it's, yeah. you know, there's loads of independence around here there's just a lazy lake which is, is a really good concept yeah. and bra we've you know w when we first got this place we um, we had the keys we came down to open up and bra left us this box of cakes and welcome you know, we remember the dusty knock off yeah, yeah. Dusty yeah. Was amazing. They, Dusty, really good guy as well. Um, and we went over there and had a chat with with Phil and um, you know, the power of the pop up, yeah. the local, yeah. you know, and stuff. Like that. And it's just yeah, we just fell in love with it. So you know, you say about power of community and stuff. Obviously, with the Kickstarter as well that you had. Yeah, I mean, we we done the uh, independently funded, right? There's yeah, no financial yeah. backers. No, we didn't. Um, which is incredible in itself. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. We thought about it, you know. Yeah. We had, you know, because it, it would have been very easy just, to, you know, and just throw money at this and just mm. go yeah. at it. But we we decided we wanted to do it on our own, you know. And um, obviously, there was a lot of hidden costs which we didn't, you know, being a bit yeah. naive towards opening a business you don't know about. Um, so when we started opening, they obviously solicitor bills and things yeah. like that, and they were like, "Where's all this money kind of went?" So mm. we had we had no option but to kind of do a Kickstarter. Yeah, and we we approached all these you know amazing chefs you know uh, you know it, obviously Tom Brown that was by really good friends of mine mm. um, Michael Bremner who had done GBM before and then some of them you know obviously uh, Peter and Josh you know guys like that but some chefs I've never even met or worked with and you know like Richard Bainbridge Lee West Clark. I just kind of I just approached them and said would you, you would you mind helping and they, they just jumped on it they're like yeah get whatever you need and. Honestly, without Great British Menu, we wouldn't have this. But it definitely could be that platform to... I mean, you're putting yourself out there to kind yeah. of get criticised or whatever it is. But I kind of went on it with the view to I got nothing it. to lose. I got nothing to lose. I'll just, yeah. you know, I go in there and hopefully not make an agent of myself. Yeah. And well, just, but they might appear, as I say, they might have, you know, really good friends I've met through it and connections and whatever else. And it's, as I say, it's, it's put us on the map. Every week, my nan, without fail, what are you doing this week? Yeah. When I told her that, you, that we were coming here and interviewing you, she went, oh, I've actually heard of him. <laughs> she knew you. <laughs> she, I remember, I like these cooking. She knows everything about you. I was, okay, like, then. I was like, right, okay, that's already a success. My nan knows. Now my nan already goes, oh, so people do like your podcast then? I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when we came here, the idea was to... You know, let's let's just get in here, get a bit of a refurb done. I mean, mm. it, originally it was supposed to be just like a paint, but obviously it kind of escalated. <laughs> um, and it was as again, John Cook said to me before we were opening this, he didn't mess me when he said, he said, no, you should do, you should do like a little, um, you know, sample plates next door of what you're going to be doing. And I was, I was like, oh, yeah, I could do. And then it <laughs> was when we were like, actually, this is going to take sense. a long time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, made perfect sense. And. It was amazing, it really was. I mean, we just thoroughly enjoyed it. From the moment we started, we were just doing these little plates and little samples of things, no bookings, 
and it just really took off. And I mean, originally this um, Tohini's was supposed to be just uh, you know a la carte restaurant mm. with um, you know three course menu, that kind of style. And when we done the pop up, you know, I wanted to do sharing plates, little samples of what we were going to offer in here. Mm. Yeah. But we just enjoyed it so much. We went, you know, what, why are we going to change it? Yeah. So we took that and just made it on a bigger scale. Yeah. Um, and then next door we, uh, well, Ishka, we for months I was going back and forward thinking, what, what am I going to do? You know, what are we going to do with it? You know, should we just open it up as a deli? Should we, you know? And I'm not sure where we were. We kind of just realised um, that there were, we wanted to do something which wouldn't compete with anyone else, if that yeah. makes sense, because there's so much, you know, we don't want to be, you know, f competing for customers, or, you know, yeah. why not bring something different like that, you know, it's, you, you, know, you, know, you have to bring humour to food, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean, I think it, it, you know, makes people happy, food makes people happy, so, yeah. you know, well, I think, um, I think as well, you know, it's, it's quite easy to go to a supermarket and buy a, you know, a ready meal, a ready, whatever, one, a ready yeah. meal or whatever else, but it's also very, very simple. You know, our, our style of cooking is simple. So, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, preparation goes into it. And when you think of it, the amazing produce we have on our doorstep, yeah. you know, we've got, you know, we've got the best lamb in the world. You know what I mean? We've got, yeah. um, you know, in season, you know, White Valley asparagus is the best in the world. You know, and, you know, for me, I look forward to that time of year. I look forward to when White Valley asparagus comes in the season. So yeah. we can, we don't do anything with it. We just grill it. And yeah. that's it. Wow. Bigger than just cooking it simple. And that's actual local produce exactly. which you utilise so, in the seasonal I think, change. I think with that coming in and people realising that they have so much on their doorstep and there is, as you say, like farmers markets and things mm. like that going on now. Where, Huge thing, yeah. You know, everything is so accessible now. Liverpool. Personally, I don't think you can, you can't compete with them, obviously, financially. No. Um, but you just look at the depth. You know, yeah. if Aguero gets injured, it's not the end of the world. No, I mean, exactly. You exactly. Imagine, I mean, if, you know, if Mane or Salah gets injured, you're thinking, oh, or Borscht, Van Dijk. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even with Liverpool, I mean, yes, okay, they've went out there and they've spent, you know, 75 million on a defender. They spent, what, 70 million, was it, yeah. on a goalkeeper? But they'll still never hit that where they're able to pay £350,000 a week. On the whole, though, it's just, it's got to be exciting just, just to watch it come to this stage, still you know, in the Champions League. It's horrible every game. <laughs> you don't have an out-and-out striker, but no. then do we play with an out-and-out striker? I think it's interchangeable. I, I've never seen a striker, I say striker, like F uh, Firmino before, yeah. who sort of ghosts in between. Really peculiar, but it seems to work because yeah. of the way Mane does it. Mane's might been my favourite, apart from Mane's been ridiculous. Apart from Mo Salah. Virgil van Dijk has played 2,935 minutes in the Premier League this season, and not a single person has dribbled the ball past him. Edison is the best player, but who the gets in the Brazilian is, team at first? Who's their number one? I don't care, you can throw me, sta you can throw me stats. But I just say, it's not Edison. Right. That is Alison. Who are you more comfortable with in the sticks? When you're cooking in the kitchen, what are the what are the football thoughts you have? Do you know what, I shouldn't really say this, but um, I've always got my phone on the kitchen. I've always got Sky Sports on. Yeah. <laughs> it sits right in front of the passer. Um, so if anybody does come in for food and they think the service is a bit slow in that evening because there's a match on. I'm, I don't know, I still don't really understand how it works. You know, do they... Mm. So who, who is it that makes the call to say we're going to review it? I think when it gets more streamlined uh, and then the, the eradicating the small errors which we mm. see it taking hold, I think it'll flow nicely. It'll change the whole game. People don't realise when it's actually brought in, it'll be a different way of defending because it's very standoffish with those yeah, yeah. technical players anyway. So when, when all those uh, decisions are made, you know, when it's screaming like ref, it's, it's like there was something off the ball or something's hit and they bring it back a couple of seconds. I think that needs to be controlled. Once that is in place, I'm a big fan of VAR because I believe that it, it brings, it tries to bring neutrality into the game, which it, it should be. When it gets to like little issues like, was it a corner or was it a throw-in or wherever else? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, got, I've still got faith in the Cardiff City. Uh, you think they'll stay up? I, I, I believe they will. I mean, I, I, you know, obviously I want Cardiff to stay up. Yeah. But in the same token, I want Burnley to beat City, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
what advice you got for anyone who's thinking about starting their own little little hustle, their own little business, their own little joy? Business or cooking? Business. Business, um, if you can, try and do it on your own. You know what I mean? Try not to... Um, so too many because, cooks? Yeah, well, it's not that. I mean, because you can make your own decisions, you can make your own mistakes yeah. and stand by them. You know, with... Um, and I'm just a big believer in it. You know, I mean, I've, made, I've made mistakes, and but at least I can stand there and go, well, I made it. When it comes to cooking? Um, get yourself into a good kitchen. And, you know, when I when I started cooking, I kind of was, I had this thing in my head that I want to be a head chef and I want to be the boss. And yeah. Don't do that. Get yourself in the kitchen. Learn as much as you can from good chefs. And and just humility and just learning constantly. And just craft. Yeah. Just work hard. This is going to sound quite negative, but I've had... I, I say that young chefs coming through, you know, if you're dreading going to work every day and you don't enjoy it, there's no point in doing it. And if you do enjoy it, you'll never work a day in your life. It's that time. It is that time. This, we went off special edition What is this? What is Take It to Heaney? Uh, Take It to Heaney is where we've asked all our followers on Twitter to send us their, their meals that they've had in the last week. Send us some pictures. Had or made? Made. Right, right. right. Okay. We'll go to. You can be as honest or brutal or as lovely as you want. Yeah. It's up to you. I'm a lovely guy. You're a lovely guy. <laughs> lovely guy. <laughs> Should we start with ours then? Yes. Okay. Right, let's start with sure. ours. Oh, you want to tell me who's done them? Right, okay. I will show, <laughs> tell you about ours because I haven't, I can't, I, if you slaughter mine, I'll be upset for days. He will cry. So I made mac and cheese with butternut squash. Right? Yeah. Okay. First Look impressions. First impressions. Overcooked. Comfort. Comfort yeah. food. Looks good. Comfort food. And oh. then it's a little. Oh, needs needs it's a better plate, I'd say. <laughs> That's a bowl. What do you think? I do love mac and cheese, mate. Out of ten, my mac. Well, you throw me off with the butternut squash, I'm afraid. So mm. yeah, there's butternut squash in there, I'm and there's go. three different types of cheese. Kids involved for bonus. They didn't make that. They didn't. Yeah, they, looks, they a, looks, a, looks, a, looks, <laughs> a, looks a bit dry. We'll give that a strong six. Vegetarian meatball marinara. marinara so. We are veggies. Yeah, we are. Right. Okay. We, <laughs> with sweet potato croquettes served with kale, asparagus, and a broccoli side. Now that is comforting. That's his. That looks pretty good. Fresh, it does, fresh it? basil. I, was, I looked at that and I was like, I'd eat that. Yeah, fresh basil. I'd have to eat that. You could stop it on Every the grill. I like my melted just... cheese, but apart from that, yeah, that's, that's, pretty that's good. fair. That's a yeah, bit of melted. Yeah, a yeah. yeah. bit of melted going on. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, that's written out of 10. Yeah, that's. We give that a 7. 7! Sorry, seven, man. This is Nathan, our mate Nathan, who's a friend of the show, long time listener. Beans and sausage on buttered toast. There's no effort on with. There's no love. That's not even on he sourdough. Has hashtag dad meal. Mm. Came home from work. His wife and his son had eaten already. It's disappointing bread. So sure disappointing. Are. The choice of bread is very disappointing there. Are they, are they home cooked sausages? Are they in no, the I, I, reckon that's a tin. I reckon that's a, that's a tin with both of them in. Yeah. I'd eat that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you do <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, if it had better bread, I'd be all over it. Bit of sourdough, is that what you're saying? Potentially, yeah. Yeah? Mm. Or a thicker slice. In a bowl as well, what's he doing? Yeah, I know. What's he playing at? Yeah. Me? No, we're going to... It's got to be worse than my mac and cheese. It is, man. <laughs> <laughs> Your mac and cheese looks really good. Four. Your mac and cheese looks really good. I mean, four is pretty good for toasting two bits of bread and opening a can of beans. But yeah, no effort. Yeah. Yeah. In a bowl. It's not <laughs> bad. Uh, this is... <laughs> Mitchell Gad, who is the co-host of this, who left, who's left last week, to go, he now lives in Australia, he was our co-host for a year, and now he lives in Australia, he's still the co-host. There's no way he's made this. He's just remotely. We know Mitch, we remote. saw him make burgers in the grazing shed, he couldn't He couldn't crush chickpeas with his hands. There's I don't no trust way him with, a, with a knife or a butter this knife. This is chicken skewer, frittata, black rice with cashews and feta, Ra and a pumpkin and walnut salad. Rachel's like, made that, if there's anything. There's no way that this man <laughs> made this. But there you go. Sounds nice. Do you know what it looks like? Leftover buffet food to me. Yeah, it does. He's no way made that. If no way he's made well, that. Well, I don't know. If <laughs> <There's> no <laughs> way. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll give that a five. Hannah Jones. Homemade pizza, dough and all, with red onion, jalapeno, mushroom, mozzarella and basil. That's so she made the basil. dough here. That's fresh basil as well. That looks really good. made that from yeah. scratch. I put if I was if I was you know if it was this was take it to Luke which no one would do with no one's ever going to do that. no one ever do you know what just uh, 
Because that's actually the type of pizza that is as well. I love jalapenos. Yeah. Fresh basil on there. Doesn't look good. It's them real. I'd, I'd, give, it a good, I'd give it a 10. A 10? The pizza's pizza. ideal, isn't it? Pizza roll. So yeah, that, that's that rounds thank you for playing uh, take, yeah, take, play take it to Haiti. No, thank you very much for sending them all in. Keep yeah, them coming if you like. <laughs> Keep them coming, we'll just keep sending them on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just some menu ideas for me. <laughs> yeah. um, so, jot down cereal in a measuring jug. Only some copyrights, do they? <laughs> right. No, that's fine. <laughs> So, yeah, we've had a great episode this week. Um, we one of our, feedback? One of our best, I would suggest. We have had some feedback, as we do every, you know, we read out feedback from our listeners uh, as it comes into us. Uh, tonight, Finindy George has been in and said, I thought the blend of football and food chat worked really well. Finindy, I'm going to him for a while. No. Um, Roberto Donadoni then came in with Tommy Heaney is a dream, which... That's a, he's got a good point there. Bit golden, isn't he, Tommy? Mm. Uh, then we've had Andy Gorham. I, I don't know which one. Um, saying, I quite liked it, but also disliked it. I'm a bit in two minds. So, you know, thank you, Andy Gorham. I don't know which one. Uh, Mustafa Hadji. Oh, I love Mustafa Hadji. Nice to hear Mitchell Gag get a mention. Oh, my God. He isn't dead. So, you know, Mustafa had you. Mustafa Thank Hadji. you. And then Jose Luis Chilever, he's been in touch, and he said, clean sheet, bang around, boys. Yeah. So thank you, Jose, yes. um, for the feedback. Thank you to Fenindi, Mustafa, Roberto. That's great. That's some, that's some feedback. good feedback there. I think that's the best feedback we've had. Yeah, it is, because we've learnt Mitchell Gad isn't dead, and Tommy Heaney is a dream. <laughs> Right, just seen Tommy Heaney. We've just seen him. That was really good. Thank you very much to Tommy for his time. He's very, very busy man. That was mega. So for him to give us, what, an hour and a half of his time is massive. Thank you so much. That was incredible. Um, we hope you like it. Like, we did. Subscribe. We liked it. Yeah, that was good. See you later.